On 9-11, I was living on Capitol Hill. I lived about four blocks from the Capitol building itself, and on the morning of 9-11, I had a news conference to cover at the Rayburn House office building. So instead of going into the office, I was just going to go straight to the news conference, just walk to it from my apartment. still getting ready, getting dressed, when uh, I heard uh, the television talking about an airplane hitting the World Trade Center. Just um, in, you were looking at a, obviously a very disturbing live shot there. That is the World Trade Center, and we have unconfirmed reports this morning that a plane has crashed into one of the towers of the World Trade Center. I didn't have to be at the news conference until 10 o'clock or so, so I was glued to the TV set and saw the, the second plane hit live. When I left the apartment, I figured the chances of that uh, news conference I was supposed to cover ever making air were way less than 50-50. But I was supposed to meet a photographer there, so I figured I'd rendezvous with him and we'd figure out what we were going to wind up doing for the day when we talked at the assignment desk. On the way up the street, you pass the metro stop where all those young Capitol Hill staffers get off. You could just see how fast the news was spreading just by the, the looks on their faces, the, the sheer disbelief. And I remember hearing the jet engines overhead because you're under the approach to National Airport there on Capitol Hill and you learn to shut out that noise but at that point I thought I'm never going to be able to do that ever again and I, I remember how that noise just seemed so loud so much louder than I'd ever noticed before. I was still very aware of uh, the jet noise when I went into the Longworth office building I was taking a shortcut through Longworth because I could go in there and get down to the tunnels that connected with Rayburn. What I didn't realize was my assignment desk was trying to get hold of me and cell phones didn't work down there in those catacombs. So I didn't get the message until several minutes later that the Pentagon had been hit. We got out into what they call the horseshoe in the Rayburn building and you could see the smoke from the Pentagon rising up above uh, the trees and the buildings. Well, the photographer and I, we had no idea who was covering what at that point, and we couldn't get through the assignment desk on the cell phones. The cell phone system had just collapsed. So uh, he decided he would just shoot as much of everything that he could find of anything going on. And I was going to go back to the apartment and try to uh, make contact with the desk on a landline. Walking back to the apartment, uh, the streets were full of people. Um, almost every one of them was on a cell phone, and I started counting. And only about one in three of the cell phones were actually getting through to whoever they were trying to reach. While I was in the apartment, I did get through on the phone, but I didn't hear the sonic boom from the fighter jets arriving. You know, a lot of people who were outside, when they heard that, thought that there was an explosion over in the direction of the State Department. So there was a, that was one of the first rumors that got started that day. Back outside, uh, you could hear jets overhead and people were scrambling, and it was pretty frightening until I could uh, see that familiar silhouette of an F-16 as it, it broke through the trees and banked real sharply over the Capitol. So now I had to find the photographer again and all this chaos that was going on up on Capitol Hill, and I, I figured the best way to do that would simply be go straight to the Capitol. I figured if there was going to be a news story, if there was another plane in the air, if it was going to hit something, that's probably the something it was going to hit. So I'm going against the flow. I mean, there's all these people coming off of Capitol Hill and coming out of these congressional office buildings, and they're evacuating the buildings block by block back from the Capitol down to where I am. And I got up to C and First Street, and they were getting ready to put up barricades there and not let anyone pass that point. When I looked over at the uh, Capitol Hill police officer who was directing traffic, and he looked over at me, we made eye contact for just a moment, he noticed the, the press badge. He just kind of did this number, you know, with his eyes, looking around then kind of motioned to me and turned his back like, I didn't tell you. And so I headed up toward the Capitol. So there I am between the Library of Congress and the Cannon Office Building, and I'm making a beeline for the Capitol, and there's really no one there except police officers, and no one's bothering to stop me. I was just pushing my luck because I feared at any moment someone was going to grab me and tell me to get out of there, but no one did. I just kept going until I wound up on the Capitol grounds. 
for about 45 seconds, I was the only person here on Capitol Hill, here on the Capitol grounds. You know, I was one of thousands of people that were on Capitol Hill uh, at the time that Flight 93 was supposed to get there. And I don't know if I would have been caught out in the open or if I would have been protected down in one of the tunnels, but, you know, I'll give the passengers and crew of Flight 93 the benefit of the doubt because if I don't owe them my life, a lot of people in Washington do.